Hello, and today we're going to be talking about groups in groups. Um, and if you spent any time in the Zoom room, uh, different Facebook pages and forums, you're going to see uh, the recommendation is we should not be putting groups in groups. And for most of the time, that is true. That's a great rule to follow. But uh, like with any art, uh, you need to understand the rules so you know when to break them. And uh, that's what I want to show you today is a little bit about why we shouldn't do it and maybe some use case where it makes sense to actually put groups in groups. Um, and to, in order to do this, let's start with going over to the layout. And uh, we will start with why we shouldn't do it. So here I have a house outline plus windows group highlighted, okay? And you can see it's made up of, uh, you know, each window uh, and then my post uh, are submodeled and uh, you know, some horizontal and verticals that have been split that are split, that are submodeled. But you can see there's nothing blue in here. Blue, if it's if you have something blue, that's a group. So there's no groups in my house outline plus windows groups. Now I created this group in group test and it looks identical over here. It's the exact same things except this group was created with uh, my horizontals, verticals, and windows groups. All right, so now let's go back to the sequencer and see what happens. All right. So now I'm on my house outline plus windows, and I have uh, just a bars effect. And you can see, let's go back a little bit. If I put it on the default group, that's going to treat the entire group as a uh, as a single, uh, basically as a single matrix and puts the bars effect across it. When I get down to this render style, the per model default, okay, now it's going to treat each individual model as its own element and put the bars effect on it. You know, so we have bars effect going up the columns, across the windows, across the horizontals. So, okay. Now, if I created my group, the same group, but I had done it with a, uh, using the individual, uh, with groups inside of individual elements, now you can see. I'm not getting the same. I'm not getting the same look. It doesn't look anything like this. And when people tell you if you have groups and groups, they just need not render as expected. This is exactly what they're talking about. The pixels are still going to light up, um, just maybe not how the sequencer intended or how you, can, yeah, not how uh, how you intended or expected them to look. Um, same thing. We'll go here. I've got a shock wave. Right. Same thing. You can see it's uh, applied. Now I'm on a per model default render style over here. So you can see it's doing each one individually. Same thing, I'll just copy it and I'll put it on this other one, which is on the, uh, which has the groups in it. And you can see it's the same thing. It's not giving us the desired effect. And third, just one last example. Here's a single line, right? And if I, same thing, it's on the per model default. Um, actually, no, let me just show you something. If I'm on the default group, okay. That's what it's doing, All right? And I'll just copy this to here. So on the, just the overall default, it looks identical. You know, he, that the problem does not manifest itself. But let's just say I switch this to the per model default because I want that single line effect on each individual uh, thing, okay? And so I, same thing, if I put this on per model default, now you can see, see the difference. So the problem, uh, the, the issue arises when you get, depending on what render style you are, and it's not going to show up everywhere. Um, now, the developers did make a change uh, somewhat recently um, to help us out. There's a there's an additional render style, and it's called per model default deep. Okay, and what that does is that tries to dive down into your groups and groups and resolve to to what it thinks it should be. And in this case, you know, it, it does correctly fix it. Um, again, here uh, for the shockwave, yes, it does correctly fix it. And for a single line, if I do the deep, yes, you can see it does correctly uh, fix it. So it looks the same. And that'll, that'll work for as long as your, the original render style was per model default, per model default deep. Um, it works pretty good. Um, you know, your mileage may vary depending on your layout, but if the sequencer used one of these other per model, this, uh, 
affect their render styles, the default deep may not work or give the exact same res results. So the, uh, the best uh, advice I can give is you should not put, generally should not put groups in groups. And when you're building your overall things, use the individual elements uh, as we've shown here. But now I'd like to show you why we potentially should uh, break that rule. And, and in this case, we're gonna concentrate just on the mini trees. So let me just zoom in so we can see that really good when we get to work here. Um, first, I'm gonna go back over to the layout. And you can see I've got six mini trees. I've got six mini tree stars. Um, and then if I go over here, I've got a group of, you know, got a group of my six mini trees. I've got a group of just my mini trees, uh, mini tree stars. Um, but then I've also made some groups. Let me find them here. Yeah, so here's mini tree and star one. So what I've done is I've grouped star one and tree one, star two, tree two, and then so on and so forth for my other ones. And then, uh, two more things I wanna show you. So here's a group with my mini trees and stars. So it's, you see this contains the individual six stars, the individual six trees. But the one I'm here to talk about today uh, is this mini tree stars group and group. But now we're breaking rules here, right? You can see we got blue, we've got groups and groups. So this mini tree with stars is created by using the group of mini tree and star one, mini tree and star two, which we go back are these guys were just a st each star is grouped with each tree. Um, and so I'd like to show you why, in some cases, it may make sense to break the rule. <clears throat> All right, so now we're back in the, uh, the sequencer here. So here's the mini, here's mini tree and star one group. And I got a shockwave effect on it here. Um, you can just, okay, see what it does, right? It starts at the top of the tree, works its way down. Now, if I take that effect and I copy it over to this mini tree with stars group. Now, this is the one that's, that's individual, right? It's made up of six trees and six stars. Um, nothing happens. And why? And that's because we're on a default group. So it's trying to render this uh, shockwave across the whole thing. And it's not very big. It's only got a uh, radius of 30. Uh, if I bump up the radius here, you can see now it would start to work its way across, maybe even bigger, it'll go across all three. Right? Well, let's put it back, back to 30. Um, and let's change the render style to per, per model default because I want the shockwave to go over each individual thing. Now you can see what happens, right? It's close to what we had here, but there's a subtle difference. And that difference is, look here, this here shockwave starts at the top of the star, works its way down and then into the tree. We're here, it's starting at the top of the star and top of the tree at the same time and working through each prop individually. And that's because of the way this group was created. This group was created of six trees and six stars in the render style per model default, treats each prop individually. So it's applying that shock wave to each, each prop that's in there. Um, if I take the same thing, we just bump it down to one layer. So now we're in our mini tree with stars group this one we created to groups and groups. Now you can see that the effect is working exactly as we would, ex you know, we would want. It's starting at the top of the star, working its way down through the tree. So this allows us to sequence the mini tree and star together as a single prop at the group level. If I didn't create this group and I only had these, I would have to copy this effect. You know, if I, in this case I had six mini tree and star groups, I had to copy this effect six times. This allows you to do it just with one effect. Um, okay. Same thing with the pinwheel, right? So here's the pinwheel, All right? We got it on our mini tree in star one. And you can see how it's just, uh, you know, it's on both. And here, now we'll copy it to the mini tree with stars. And, and you can see it's putting it around the, uh, it's applying to the whole group. So we'll switch to the per model default. You can see we're getting a shock, or sorry, pardon me, the, uh, the pinwheel on both individually on the stars and the trees. But as soon as we bring this down to the group in group one, and now it's treating it as one, each tree and star is a single prop together. All right, we'll go a little quicker here. So I think you're quitting the idea, hopefully. Same thing here, here's a single uh, single strand effect that's 
you know, moving up through. And if I copy that and put it on the group here, now it's on the default, so it's treating this as one big thing. We'll go to per model default. Again, right, it's doing the same thing, tree and star individually. But if we bring it down here, we can we are able to sequence on the group level and get our desired result. And here we go. Here's a bars effect. And you guys can probably guess what's going to happen here. We'll change it to the per model default. And the same thing, right? We're getting a bars on the tree, bars on the star, but we want we want to treat this whole thing as an as a single prop. Uh, that covers uh, just about everything I wanted to talk about uh, regarding groups and groups. Um, you know, explain why uh, in most cases you shouldn't have groups and groups, uh, the reasons why, and then the, uh, you know, but once you know the rules and understand the rules, there are cases where it may be beneficial to break them, which is what I hopefully have demonstrated to you today. Uh, I hope you learned something, and uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.